What's going on, people? My gearhead and gearhead at Family. Familia. Uh, what's going on, policeman? Welcome back to Quarantine. Today, guys, just gonna go over how I break in a new vehicle. I'm just gonna give you my tips and the way that I've done it. It's always worked for me. You know, I feel like I've got pretty healthy cars, except for the RX-7, which we're not gonna mention that because it's a sore spot, okay? something different if I'm wrong tell me I'm wrong we can discuss it we're grown-ups first tip so you got your new car it's your baby you pay quite a bit of money for it and you're gonna be paying quite a bit of money for it unless you're just rich or you know really smart either way with your money Unfortunately, I am neither one of those things. So I'm going to be paying quite a bit of money for this 2020 Mustang GT for a while. So, so you got your new car. You get in, start it, start it up. You should always let your vehicles, and now I do this, it doesn't matter break in or 200,000 miles, but you should let your vehicle warm up. You shouldn't just start it, take off. To me, that just seems like a really bad idea for um, a lot of reasons. We're not going to get into technical. Um, most people that watch this channel, they know this stuff already, but in case you don't, what I like to do, NA, you should let it idle for a couple of minutes, you know, two or three minutes, whatever, put on your seatbelt, check your phone, do whatever you need to do, get, get situated in the car, and then take off, and be easy until your oil temperature gets up. Now, a turbocharged car, I, you, it, it'll take different times, five to ten minutes. The Focus RS I had, it got 10 minutes every time I started it up, more if it was cold, because what I go off of is oil temperature. Now, a lot of newer cars don't have oil temperature gauges, which is a horrible oversight. I think that all cars should have an oil temperature and oil pressure gauge. Um, the Mustang doesn't have an oil temperature gauge, you know, easy to hand. You can go through the settings and get it up on your dash, but, a NA car, it's not really as big of a deal as a turbo car. You should still do it. And what that does, letting a car warm up, is just lets everything get ready, you know? I mean, it, if you get woke up, if somebody just startles you awake, and then you gotta get out and run a marathon, think about that. Your body's not gonna react well. Your mind, you're gonna be frazzled, and just things aren't gonna go well. Well, it's kinda the same with a car. You should let your oil pressure settle because these cars have an accelerated warm-up process. If you notice, on a cold start, you'll fire up your car and it'll go to a higher RPM and idle for a few seconds. That's to try to warm up the cats and, you know, all that stuff, which is actually kind of a bad thing for your car because the last thing a cold car needs is high RPMs. So what you're trying to achieve is letting the oils flow. All the fluids start to flow and lubricate everything before there's any pressure, any more stress on them. So yeah, let your cars warm up, be kind to them, and they'll be kind to you. Second thing, anybody's gonna tell you whether they believe in a hard break-in or a soft break-in, which we'll get into here in just a second, but you need to vary your RPMs. Do not just hop on a highway, put it in cruise control. You shouldn't even touch cruise control in a brand new car until a thousand miles, in my opinion. Um, because the constant RPM is not helping the seals in your engine um, mate to the sealing surfaces. You see what I'm saying? So you need periods of load and uh, compression braking. You need 
heat cycles, you need plenty of heat cycles to break in an engine. So you need to you make sure that you vary your RPMs. And also, along with that, is easy on your RPMs. Don't go above three grand. Um, don't go above, you know, more than a quarter throttle. Now, a lot of people do believe in a hard break in. A lot of a lot of good old boys take it get out there and just run. be some truth to that i mean I, I i understand the thinking behind it you know i mean I, I get the science behind it but for me i think a gradual increase in rpms and throttle percentage and i think that is a better way to go that gives that doesn't really shock things into sealing and because that, that's what a break-in is all about your brakes your clutch your engine it's all about getting brand new seals to seal properly because that thing think about older cars that we're driving now what what's the biggest problems people worry about head gaskets uh, valve stem seals you know piston rings losing compression or rotary apex seals so it's all in the aid of prolonging your car's life. Your car's gonna last more than likely for the first 30,000 miles just fine. Don't matter, you know, run the hell out of it, whatever, that's fine. As long as it gets oil changes, it's probably gonna last for a while. But what about when it gets to 100,000 miles? That's where taking these steps really come into play. Thirdly, you're not just breaking in your engine. You're also uh, setting your brakes and clutch. So there are steps to doing that as well. Um, braking, what you wanna do is when you first get in your car, uh, you should go out and you should get on your brakes, get up to you know, 40, 50 miles an hour and do it and do a a decently solid stop but not you know jamming on your brakes no you don't want to do anything sharply you want to lean into it and that's just going to help things wear in to the mating surfaces your brake pads to the rotors the pistons in your calipers um, it's just going to help things bed in and set up and the better you can set something up and start it off right the longer it's going to last Num numero four senior change your oil and not in 5,000 miles in about 50 miles <laughs> this is an important thing to me now a lot of new manufacturers will tell you there's no braking period anymore and there might not be they know what they're doing they're engineers i mean you know they went to college for this stuff but if i'm gonna pay this much money for a vehicle and pay it for this long believe me i'm gonna take extra steps to be careful because i love my car and i want my car to love me back so i changed my oil at 50 miles below 100 miles the first 100 miles is the most crucial oil change you will do in your car why because bearings and all that sealing new seals uh the piston just all these new surfaces of metal having to come together and mesh and form a bond to each other that is going to last for a long time there's more likely to have metal shavings, um, things, you know, grinding together and coming together. There's going to be junk in your oil more than likely. So you should change your oil within the first 50 to 100 miles. Follow the other steps first, change your oil, and then just continue with your break-in period as normal. But that, that first oil change, I think, is pretty crucial. Number five enjoy your car just because you're breaking it in 
doesn't mean you have to worry so much about driving it and all that. You should take your car out and, and enjoy it. It's your brand new car. Hopefully it's something that you've wanted for a long time that you've, in, you know, been inspired to get. So enjoy it. Drive it seven tenths of how you normally would. I think that's a pretty safe number, seven tenths. After a thousand miles, I like to go to a hundred more miles. I'll work my way slowly up to, you know, another thousand RPM, another hundred miles, another thousand RPM, and and just do heat cycles. Make sure that your car has a chance to cool down and get fully up to running temp, and not just quick trips. It needs if you start your car, it needs to get to running temp. And if you stop your car, it needs to cool down, preferably, but that's a perfect case scenario. All right, guys, just a quick way. This is just how I like to break in a new car. If you can think of anything different, if you have different ways, tips, anything I said wrong, let me know in the comments. You know, this has been a huge discussion for God, since cars have been around between gearheads, steam cars, old guys these things and the cool mustaches talking about sir I do apologize but you did not change your steam dollops uh, I mean you know this has been around for a long time so guys I hope you subscribe I hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more from me your favorite gearhead Polly P